If you've ever watched an episode of House MD, then you've been exposed to problem based learning. What's up everyone and welcome to vlog number two, where today we're going to talk about the curriculum here at Western University of Health Sciences College of Veterinary Medicine. Now this is something that I get asked every single month by a prospective vet student. They want to know about the unique curriculum that we have here at Western U. So for the next few minutes we're going to dive in and I'm going to tell you everything that you want to know about Western U's College of Veterinary Medicine. Western U is located in Southern California, specifically Pomona, California, which is in Los Angeles County. And this makes it such a great spot to go to vet school because you have so many amazing options of uh, fun things to do during your free time. And yes, you do get free time during vet school. It's not a lot, but you get it. But we'll save that for another vlog. The first class started in 2003, so we're still fairly a new vet school. And we received full accreditation by the AVMA Council of Education. Western U prides themselves in creating truly a new paradigm in veterinary education. Most of you know that Western's curriculum consists of problem-based learning, or PBL. So what is PBL? PBL is an education system where, where you learn to solve problems through a case. And now this was actually started and it's usually utilized in a lot of medical schools and dental schools. But Western U is the only vet school to have this system as their sole curriculum. Now we'll talk a little more about the PBL process, but first I want to break down our curriculum within the four years. So your first two years at Western U, you will spend those years learning your basic sciences. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you are in your PBL sessions for two hours. And those two hours is where you'll go over your cases for the week. Now, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays may also be coupled with clinical skills. And that's going to vary every single week. You may be out on the farm doing large animal work you may be in the small animal hospital on campus doing work there, but the clinical skills course is exactly what it sounds like. It's for you to develop clinical skills. We get exposure way early in our curriculum starting your very first week. You're going to learn suture patterns. You're going to learn how to properly get into a sterile gown and sterile gloves for surgery. A lot of vet schools don't expose students to this until their clinical year, which is third or even fourth year. So here at Western, you get a lot of hands-on experience right at the beginning. And then every Tuesday and Thursday, you'll have anatomy lab and then something that we call BSL. Now BSL stands for basic science lab or lecture, depends on who you talk to. But the purpose of BSL is to sort of provide the lecture portion of our curriculum. The BSL usually provides some sort of hands-on or interactive session where the class comes together as a whole and, and you go over physiology or embryology, immunology, topics such as those, and you go over those and correlate those to the case that you're studying that week. So for example, in musculoskeletal block, you may have a BSL on bone growth. And so in that class, that's where you'll spend two hours learning about that and talking about that with a specialist. Now the class is usually split up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. One half will be in anatomy, the other half will be in BSL. And then at the two hour mark, the class will switch. Your anatomy lab is self-directed. Each group, your group of seven students, your PBL group, you will have a cadaver, a dog and a cat and you're responsible for dissecting that cadaver and studying whatever is relevant to the case or to that block. Um, so again, musculoskeletal, you're going to learn all of the muscles, all of the nerves, the bones, and how those interact. 
but don't worry there are five anatomists that will float around throughout the session and they'll be there to help you guys if you need help on Wednesdays you have a course that's called veterinary issues this course is essentially a veterinary ethics course it's actually a lot of fun at times because we talk about current issues in veterinary medicine we talk about laws and regulations we talk about lots of dramatic things and it gives you a safe and professional environment to have discussions about these issues and see where everyone takes a stance um, so that's a fun course and it actually because we take this course we actually don't have to take the California law exam after we graduate vet school which is a requirement for other veterinarians it's because we cover the laws within this course within your first two years of vet school so how does PBL work as I mentioned every Monday Wednesday and Friday you will be in your small group of six or seven with one assigned faculty member each day you will get something we call disclosures those disclosures are synopsis or little insights to the case that you're working on so on Monday for instance you may get just a history and a signalment of the patient and so within that two-hour session you start formulating something we call learning issues learning issues are areas that that you need to explore and study on your own or as a group to better understand the basic sciences so for example if you have a case of a eight-year-old Bernice Mountain Dog that comes to your clinic in Southern California and it gives you his vitals so his TPR his temperature is 103.4 his respiratory rate is 42 and his heart rate is 130 well as a first-year vet student everyone is not going to know the normals for a dog so that's what we call a learning issue you write that up on your board what is a normal TPR for a dog so what's the normal temperature what's the normal pulse what's the normal respiratory rate for a dog and so that's sort of how you develop some of the basic sciences through this and so then in your in that case you may establish okay this dog has a fever well now this is where the basic sciences come in what causes a fever how does a fever happen in the body we know that fevers are a thing but what is the basic science behind that so again that's the basis of first and second year as you go throughout the week the case is going to progress and progress your group will take home and assign learning issues every day and you do that as homework and then the next session you'll come back and sure to share with your group what you learned now one unique thing at Western is all of our notes and homework is shared with the entire class so the class gets to share this and they get to see everyone's notes and pull all of this together sort of as what you would have from a lectured based curriculum there is no way that you can cover everything that you need to know on your own within one week for that case so it's really important here at Western U that you can collaborate and work with your peers because you are going to need them to survive first year of vet school every Monday the following week you will come together as a class in the morning and you will have what we call grand rounds the grand rounds is a time for the class to reflect back on the case from the previous week and bring up questions that you have for the specialists now all of the specialists are gathered around in the room and they're questioning the students the students are questioning them it's a time to really connect the dots and bring the case together as a whole so that's a pretty quick rundown of first and second year second year is pretty much the same as your first year um, but it's a little harder so second year you're going further and deeper into the knowledge and into the learning issues so first year you really gain a, a basic foundation of terminology and some of the basic physiology and anatomy second year you push yourself a little harder and really dig into the physiology and pathology through those cases now let's talk about third year at Western U at Western U we start clinics our third year unlike most vet schools where you start your fourth year 
Now, third year clinics, I like to describe it as more of a general practice type feel. So third year, you actually, you're split up into the four blocks again, but this time you're distributed out to veterinary hospitals all across California. Now, yes, we do not have a teaching hospital at Western U. But we do have a small animal general practice at Western U called the Western U Pet Health Center. A lot of people don't realize that we have this. This is such an awesome resource and you will actually spend two weeks at this hospital during your third year. Your third year is broken into four blocks. Blocks will be, will consist of on campus and that's where you learn about public health, global health, food and feed safety and courses like that and you will spend eight weeks doing that. Another block is small animal block. That's where you spend eight weeks doing small animal medicine. And you are sent out to veterinary hospitals all across California and you learn small animal medicine and also emergency medicine. Another block you have is sort of a large animal slash zoo slash lab animal medicine block and it's exactly what it sounds like. You will spend weeks working on dairy cattle, beef cattle. You'll spend two weeks working at a zoo and learning about zoo medicine. And something again that's really unique to Western is you are required to spend two weeks working in an animal laboratory. Now, some people may be scared of this, but I can tell you from experience, it's actually really amazing, and you gain a great appreciation for laboratory medicine. We're the only vet school that requires every student to rotate through a lab animal um, externship. And so, you're sent to various universities, really prestigious labs across the US, and you spend two weeks there learning about veterinarians' roles, in lab animal medicine. And then the final block that you have is your equine and surgery block. It's exactly what it sounds like. You spend time working with horses and then you also spend time doing small animal surgery and anesthesia. Now, as a third year student, you do have some preferences as far as to which hospitals you would like to rotate at. It's not a guarantee that you will get it, but most students get their rotations. You sort of submit your entries into this lottery system and then it assigns you the hospitals. Now fourth year I think is the most exciting year at Western U and we are nowhere near campus usually. Fourth year is up to you. It's what you want to do. You literally can travel the entire world your fourth year of veterinary school. All that has to happen is the hospital that you'll be rotating at must be approved by the school. So here at Western U, we don't really track, but you could sort of think of it like that. For example, my fourth year, I'm not doing any large animal medicine. I'm only doing small animal because that's what I'm going into after graduation. During fourth year, you are required to take a core internal medicine course and then a core surgery course. Those are only offered at select hospitals, but other than that, the rest of the year is up to you and where you want to study. Some classmates actually even move back home during fourth year and complete all of their rotations back at home. Some students go to Africa or Europe you can literally go anywhere you want to gain these clinical hours as long as it's approved by the school, which is super exciting. And also it sort of gives you a leg up on some other veterinary students. So if you're like me and you're considering applying for an internship and then a residency, well, you may be in luck because you're going to spend one month at each rotation during your fourth year and you may get to spend that month at a place that you're applying to an internship at. So that sort of gives you a leg up compared to other students because that hospital really gets to know you in and out. And so they really know whether you'll be a good fit or not for their internship program. Western U has now graduated tons of specialists all across the U.S. in emergency and critical care, in internal medicine, in production and population medicine. We have specialists all over the U.S. and it's because of our unique problem-based learning curriculum that has helped these students grow and go beyond. 
Because of our unique curriculum here at Western U, students are matching into internships and residency residencies at such a high rate. In fact, this last year's class, 47% of the class went into an internship or a direct residency. And so guys, I promise it really does work. Um, there are times I'm not gonna lie, it gets very frustrating having to teach yourself or find a lot of the notes on your own, but I think it truly does make you a good doctor in the long run. So this was a very quick rundown of Western U's curriculum and the College of Veterinary Medicine. I know it was probably all over the place. I could talk about this for hours. Um, I may make another video really describing the PBL process a little more in depth because it's really hard to to explain in a 10 minute video. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to email me or comment on below and um, I'll be happy to help you. I love Western U. I thank them for everything they've done for me. Um, yeah, be sure to subscribe to my channel below, tell your friends, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at drmore.studentvet. See you next time.